It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Uh, Charles, the Colts coming off a tough year, just four wins in 2022. You think that they can compete this year in the AFC South? I do, because I think it's a wide open division, brand new head coach, brand new way of doing things, likely a brand new quarterback, and a defense that I think is a little bit on the underrated side. So yes, absolutely, I think they can compete in their division. And meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air so people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And this taken in at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Well, the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time, and it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. DeForest Buckner with a sack, the former number seven overall pick. Well, if they have any thoughts of coming in here and getting this road victory, that's not the way to start it out on the first play of the game. Yeah, one thing you always say when you go on the road, take the crowd out of the game. They actually brought the crowd into it by permitting that sack right out of the gate. The NFL's leading rusher in 2019 and 2020, Derrick Henry. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. to start the game would have been a real disappointment so this is a nice job of finding something you think will work and executing it and they're able to keep this opening drive going a first down carry for Henry and he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory there to stop him, Shaquille Leonard, the linebacker. From just across the midfield stripe, here's a second and eight. They'll run it again with Henry. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 44. territory though if they're stopped now a play fake and it's Tannehill and he's caught on the sideline but he's not going to have a first down they say he was out of bounds so a big call there that brings up fourth my dad used to 
tell me all the time when you're going ready to play a big time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. So here come the Colts to take over for the first time. And leading the way is the number four pick in the draft out of Florida. Here's Anthony Richardson. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try to create some space. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. On second down, it's Moss again. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped. 10 yards. First down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. they will try to continue that trend here this afternoon. The tackle was by the Boston College product, Harold Landry. Now a second and 10. Now Richardson, he's going to keep it running right. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, if nothing else, they were able to pick up one first down on this drive and get it away from their own goal line, but... Not much happening after that, and it leads to a punting situation. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And taken at the 46. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Titans are going to start this drive in great field position as they take over first and 10. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Tannehill. Short throw taken in by Conklo. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On second down, here's Henry. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. One of the great things about most guys that play on the offensive line is that they have patience and extreme confidence in themselves. This group's gotten pushed around the entire game, haven't been able to move the ball very well. But after picking up a first down, running it there, they'll feel a little bit better about themselves going forward. And he's going to go down here a sack. They push him back to the 34. Quitty Pay 
credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. I don't know if he was just working through progressions or just unaware of the pressure, but no matter. Excellent work by the defense to get him to the ground before he could escape the pocket. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. To throw is Tannehill. He completes it to Henry. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped it to one. 33 yards that time. Well, that's something that this defense is not going to be able to allow if they're going to have success here. They've got to be able to wrap up and get guys on the ground. They end up letting him get away, and it turns into a big play here early on. I can just see veteran observers of the game shaking their heads and talking about the dearth of tackling in the game today. Back to throw, Tannehill. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. DeAndre Hopkins, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Titans are on the board first here this afternoon. And the touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. And I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play, got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Extra point up and good by Folk, and it's now a 7-0 game. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Richardson to throw off play action. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. From the 41, here's second down and seven. There, yeah, Richardson back to throw it. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets in the enemy territory. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Moss on the give up the middle. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down.
And they'll come up second and seven. Right back to Moss. Bust through the tackle. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Short one there, caught by Granson. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on fourth. They're going to run for it. It's Moss. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth and two in the NFL, not ordinarily a running down anymore. Usually that ball's moved through the air. They went ahead and gave it to the back, and he ends up picking up the first down. I'm not sure if they fooled him as much as they just did a nice job executing. Needed two, and they got three. First down, they stay with Moss on the ground. A gain of three, second down. Nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession. From the 33, here's a second and seven. As they've got it as we resume action. Richardson now on second down. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And Pittman going to have a Colts first down as he'll get it down inside the 25. Pittman's first catch, good for a first down. Play action, now Richardson. And he's brought down, but he has it down to the 12 on a pickup of 12, first and 10. Brandon, you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves, but I have to admit it. I liked what I just saw there. That rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit. Now, you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long, but he picked up the first down, kept fighting for yards, and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving. Quick throw into the hands of Pittman. Touchdown! Michael Pittman, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Matt Gay on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman. They kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Titans now just about ready to take over. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth. If you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because 
They just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's Tannehill. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. two past the marker following a gain of six. Partner, you know most routes are timed out or measured precisely, but when you know where the first down marker is, you tailor your route to that, don't you? That was third and five, and they picked up enough for the first down. Inside handoff, Henry. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. It was Quiddy Pay who made the stop coming off the edge. The defensive line made pretty easy work of the offensive line that time. And people get tired of the cliche that the battle is won in the trenches. But it's a cliche because it's true. And how about the battle right there? One on the edge, and the ball carrier did not benefit. Tannehill, a short throw taken in by Conquo. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Tannehill steps away to his left and Tannehill's got the first as he slides to a halt Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game third down that's when the clamps are supposed to come out but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Here's Tannehill. Complete, it's Henry. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. A gain of 37. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on a wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Henry. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. But good luck there as a ball carrier. You get handed that football, look up. Oh, there's a big D tackle ready to swallow you whole for a loss. Yeah, you kind of count on your guys to give you at least a little bit of time, a little bit of space to try and maneuver, but not on that one. And he will take this one in for a Titans touchdown. Derrick Henry taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans have taken the lead. You think back to some of the great goal line bruisers of the past, the Earl Campbells, the John Riggins, the Marshawn Lynches. I think you can put Derrick Henry right in that group as he scores there with another patented Derrick Henry run. Full connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. The drive will start with an option going left. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. First play of the drive, a first down run. That sets you up for whichever way you want to go. Do you come right back and run the football again because you've got them on their heels? Or do you play chess match with them, break tendency, and go play action and go for the big shot? They'll run on first down with Moss. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Second and nine from the 44. They'll toss this right side to Moss. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Any team that successfully runs a toss play cannot do it with an offensive line that can't move. You've got to have mobile players, especially those tackles, who can move laterally and seal the edge in order for the back to get on field. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 at the 36. And they'll go to the air now with Richardson. And his throw is incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field that took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Second and 10. Throwing again, it's Richardson on second down. That's going to be caught by Moss. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. It's a gain of 34. You can feel the effort all the way up here. He tried his best to get there. Didn't quite make it, but down around the two, three yard line. Got to love the effort, and especially the big play that gave his offense a great opportunity. Moss. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That's about as good as a linebacker can diagnose that play, isn't it? It certainly is. And what he did really well is that while he was diagnosing, he got his feet in motion without actually going anywhere and taking a false step that he had to make up later. He read it, got his feet in motion, and then he just took off and made the play. Moss once more. And he'll get into the end zone. And touchdown, Indianapolis. Zach Moss taking it in from four yards out. And the Colts are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I like their little bit of courage and play calling, too. Because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throw in the ball. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And we are tied at 14. Sends this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
And the Titans getting set to go. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all. But right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running left, it's Henry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here's second and 10. Here's Tannehill. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Juju Prince. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie. And they start first and 10. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The sack by Harold Landry, the former Boston College Eagle. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. So after the sack here, second and 14. Richardson looking to throw this. Breaks a tackle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. The sack up first down took him out of a traditional running play and put him in a passing situation, but didn't stop him from running anyway, did it? No, I was surprised when he took off. I thought, oh, he's got some space. He might pick up five, six, seven yards. He goes all the way and picks up the first. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Here's Richardson to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice gain. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Now a toss here, Moss running to the left. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Richardson out to the right and complete to Pittman and he'll be out of bounds it's a nice pickup of 12 yards and it gives him a first and goal that's a nice job of working his way open down in the red zone look that one in and it made a beeline for the pylon he didn't quite get there and you want to give him a little extra for the effort but instead he sets his guys up in excellent shape for the first and goal on first and goal, they'll try the option left. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. 
It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Well, he had success earlier in the drive, keeping it himself. Not here, though. And sometimes when you have that kind of success, you can fall in love with the option a little bit too much and not give the defense credit for making adjustments themselves. And that play starts to lose. He's got his target. It's caught for a coach touchdown. taking the lead and down near the goal line here they're able to throw it in and the key word quick quick hitter out of his hands fast into the receiver's hands even faster here's gay now to add the extra point it's up and good and that'll make the score 21 14 so that drive in total eight plays and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Second and six. Now Tannehill. Out route, and this is Henry with a catch. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. Well, partner, they've used him quite well out of the backfield in this one. And here's another nice example. They set up the screen, and he's able to pick his way downfield for a nice game there. On first and 10, Tannehill. And his pass incomplete. Complete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Going to the right here and finding Burks. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. To the air again, Tannehill. That is caught. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw, Tannehill. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Tannehill. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're going to spin the dial down their play ball and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, Tannehill. Stop just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. So he got nine yards that time, but he needed ten. And it brings up fourth and one. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. The folks' kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. What a first half we saw from the number four overall pick back in April, Anthony Richardson. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? This fielded right at the goal line. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30. And the Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. And Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it is really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. They'll run out of the gun with Moss. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now it's Richardson. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 45. 23 yards on the tuck and run. So 
operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. Richardson looking to throw. Throw left side complete. That's McKenzie. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and a couple. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 12-yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. This is where you can try and get a tight end in space. They like this matchup, so they're going to let their two receivers to his outside, run simple little short routes, hoping to suck up the secondary. And that'll free up space for their tight end on a corner route to make a big play. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. That'll bring up second down. Here's a give to Moss out of the shotgun. He showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line. 69 yards rushing for him now to this point. But well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And Gay knocks this one through, and they will open their lead up to a touchdown at 24-17. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens, because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. And yeah, they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Tannehill now to throw. Will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Tannehill. And brought in downfield by Burks. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A game there of 30 big ones. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about the big plays. Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. 
And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. And now a stoppage, and looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Well, they brought the pressure, and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit, and that's what you have to do because I was just talking with a coach the other day, and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completions step up and make those throws, and he did that. Rodney Thomas gets to him for the stop. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Henry up the middle. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. a key turnover in the red zone though had a chance to tie it and an opportunity missed and now indianapolis set to take the field their drive last time it stalled out they were forced to take the short field goal and the key phrase you nailed it forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort right to them that's not how drives are supposed to end you're supposed to put six on the board that's a consolation prize like going to the county fair you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. Shrugs him off. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That good for 19 and a first down. So after the defense gets you the ball on a takeaway and a fumble recovery of their own, you've got to reward them, don't you? You've got to stay out on the field, give them a chance to rest, and how about doing it the way they did it, running the football and picking it up on third down. Yeah, would not have wanted to go three and out. They avoid that right there. Yeah, they avoided the glares as they went back to the bench, didn't they? And a pretty good burst there as we get this across midfield and down to the 46. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I don't care what anyone says. I want a big time back in in this kind of yardage each and every time I step on the field. A tone setter, these guys are hard to find. On the counter, this is Moss. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Excellent job on the tackle for loss by Harold Landry shooting into the backfield. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, 
He may reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up for him. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just checking. They were backed up behind the sticks, but he still found a way to make that first down happen. That's the kind of fight every coach hopes his franchise quarterback has in him. Look a tough situation like that in the eye and come up with a solution on the spot. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. And they'll go to the air now with Richardson. And it's nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Richardson off the play fake. The toss here completed to Pittman. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. On third down, here's Richardson. And that is incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. Gay's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. With some complimentary football there. One side, your defense forces the fumble, and then they drive it down the field. Now, obviously, Charles, they wanted the touchdown, but at least they were able to drive it down and get free out of that. Yeah, now we'll have to see how the other sideline responds because they had plenty of time during that field goal to think about that fumble and how they were going to react. What are they going to do when they get the ball back and try to make things a little bit better for their team? The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. Yeah, difficult. And now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. From the 23, here's second and four. Here's Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Back to the air, Tannehill on second down. His throw incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. To throw is Tannehill. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by the 
this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. Back to throw, here's Richardson. This one completes Alec Pierce. And he will not get what he needed as he stopped short of the first down at around the 22 call it a gain of six on the play and that's going to bring up a fourth down and that is going to do it for this third quarter of action we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports back now in indianapolis as we are just about set to go here in quarter number four as Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Let's take it inside his own 40. 35 yards that time on the punt, and it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. A last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Looking for trailing Burks that time, but it's going to be second down. Now Tannehill. That's caught by his tight end, Trevon Wesco. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. A first down carry for Henry. He'll get this down to the 38. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's second and seven. Here's Tannehill. That'll be complete to Okonkwo. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They'll fake it. Now Tannehill. Got his man on the comebacker. That's Hopkins with it. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second and one now from the 21. Back to the ground now. It's Henry trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game, and all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. 
They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, Tannehill. Over the middle complete. That's Hopkins. And the Titans are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Tannehill. And down here, first and goal. If it's not there, don't force it. You've got at least two, if not three more shots at it. So that's a wise move to get rid of it. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better look? And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Derrick Henry. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Extra point up and good by Folk. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Second down, here's Richardson. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. 
Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Tannehill on first down. He gets it to Burks again. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Tannehill. He'll complete this one to Okakuo. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Now it's Tannehill. Short throw taken in by a Conquero. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Inside handoff, Henry. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. He was trying to dance in around the sideline, but fell just a couple of yards short still. He's got him in great position. He certainly does. They did a nice job keeping him from getting into the end zone, but they are definitely back on their heels after that run. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Henry. Will score. Touchdown, Tennessee. And this is a time of game where offensive lines can really dictate a team's fortunes. It's been a tough battle. They've been out there for a long time. But this was a question of who can wear down who. And that's excellent work to put a long drive together and finish it with a touchdown run to take the lead. On for the extra point is Folk. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And Dallas Flowers going to bring this out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there.
On first down, Richardson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Jeffrey Simmons able to take him down. It's a loss of three. Coming up with a second straight all-pro nod and 16 sacks in his last two seasons, Simmons secured a massive four-year extension from the Titans. Should lead to an even bigger season in 2023. Richardson looking to throw. And he's going to go down again. Multiple players getting home for the one-yard sack. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Here now, third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball. They've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Jeffrey Simmons in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. And that's the downside of taking these big shots because they're definitely lower percentage plays. And now you look up, and it's fourth down. So not only do you have to worry about getting big yardage, you also need to just keep the game alive. Here we go. This is fourth down. Fourth down, desperation time. Here's Richardson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well. And this time, it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. The Titans set and ready to go on offense. And this game not quite in hand yet. We'll likely see all three timeouts defensively and then reassess where we are. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. The Titans go victory formation down to a knee. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break.
And they will take a knee here. an excellent come from behind victory Charles especially there in the fourth quarter both offense and defense were clicking they're going to feel good about this one boy are they ever because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small they obviously did not give up on that one and in the end how about that come from behind victory they'll cherish this one for a while